Hola, and welcome to One Line at a Time, Episode 2. In this episode, we're looking at another line from the TV show, The Good Place. This episode, though, is a bit more complicated than the last one was. To fully understand my explanations of what's going on in these videos, you have to know how I look at things, how I look at the grammar, which means you need to be watching the videos I've been releasing on how English works. But really, you gotta know the stuff I talk about in my premium course, Logical Spanish. And right now, until none of us are stuck in our houses anymore, I'm running a Name Your Price special on the Lifetime Membership, which includes Logical Spanish. You get all my premium courses, including Logical Spanish, for whatever price you want. If you can't afford the $5 minimum, email me and I'll set up a free account for you. But even if you've seen all those videos, don't freak out if you don't understand every little thing I say in every episode. That's okay. That's normal. If you stick with it, with enough exposure, even the most complicated stuff will become familiar and simple. There will be episodes and stuff within each episode for all levels. Get what you can out of these videos and leave the rest for later. Okay, a little context. In the previous episode, we met Eleanor. When the show started, Eleanor was sitting in a waiting room, then was called into an office by some guy, played by Ted Danson. Eleanor had no clue where she was, so she asked what was going on. The guy, who we'll later find out is named Michael, explained to Eleanor that she was dead. After learning she died from being plowed into and dragged into the street by a runaway column of shopping carts in a supermarket parking lot, Ellen wants to know if she's in, then she points up and she points down. Michael answered, well, it's not the heaven or hell idea that you were raised on, but generally speaking, in the afterlife, there's a good place and there's a bad place. You're in the good place. In Spanish, the subtitlers translated that as, pues, no es la idea del cielo y el infierno que te enseñaron, pero en términos generales, en el más allá, hay un lugar bueno y un lugar malo. Estás en el lugar bueno. The first issue I want to discuss is, and this will probably come up in most episodes, words don't mean words. They don't have set meanings. Words represent ideas. Ideas. There's almost always another way to say the same thing, or another way to translate a sentence, even within the same language. And often, when one word changes, the whole sentence structure has to change. In the first sentence here, they translated it's not the heaven or hell idea as no es la idea del cielo y el infierno, which basically means it's not the idea of heaven and hell. In English, Michael used the words heaven and hell as adjectives, even though they're normally used as nouns. The heaven idea or the hell idea. That's kind of like the good idea or the bad idea. Good and bad are adjectives, heaven and hell are adjectives. But in Spanish, in this context at least, they don't talk that way. They wouldn't use the words cielo or infierno as adjectives here. For that reason, the subtitlers had to change the sentence structure. Instead of telling us more about the noun, the idea, with adjectives, they told us more about the noun, la idea, with a prepositional object phrase that's serving as an adjective. Del cielo y el infierno is a prepositional object phrase, but I just call a prepositional object that's serving as an adjective. De is the preposition. This phrase tells us more about the noun, the idea. It's of heaven or of hell. I haven't talked about prepositional objects in any YouTube videos yet, but I did cover them in module 3 of Logical Spanish, in English at least. So if you don't understand what prepositional objects are or how they can be used as adjectives or as adverbs, you need to watch module 3 of Logical Spanish. Words don't mean words also comes into play later in the same sentence. They translated that you were raised on as que te enseñaron, which basically means that they taught you. That you were raised on, that they taught you, that's the same basic idea in reality conveyed two different ways in the words of the sentences. Then in the second sentence, they translated generally speaking as en términos generales, which basically means in general terms. Generally speaking, in general terms, again, same idea expressed two different ways. I don't want to get too bogged down in the technical details right now, but the way I see this is, the phrase generally speaking speaking is serving as an adverb. We can even put it next to the verb if we want. In the afterlife, there is, generally speaking, a good place, and there is, generally speaking, a bad place. But in the Spanish translation, instead of telling us more about the verb with an adverb phrase, the subtitlers told us more about the verb with a prepositional object phrase that's serving as an adverb. En términos generales is a prepositional object phrase that's serving as an adverb. En is a preposition. We can still put this phrase next to the verb. In the afterlife, there is, in general terms, a good place, and there is, in general terms, a bad place. If that created more confusion for you than it cleared up, watch the videos in modules 2 and 3 of Logical Spanish, then watch this video again. Or at least watch the Spanish quickie I made on adverbs, then watch this video again. I bet it'll be clearer the second time. There are a few simple vocab issues I want to point out now. They use the word el cielo as heaven, but el cielo is also the most common way to say sky. In Spanish, heaven and sky can be said the same way, el cielo. 
cielo. El cielo can mean other stuff too, but it's most commonly used for sky and heaven. Then, I've always liked that enseñar is the most common way to say to teach, because enseñar can also mean to show, and when we teach somebody something, we show that person something. There's major overlap between the definitions of to teach and to show, which is why enseñar can be used for both. Another common way to say to show is mostrar. Enseñar and mostrar can both mean to show and are often interchangeable, but not always. Before I saw the subtitle from The Good Place, I don't think I knew that the afterlife was translated as el mas allá. That's interesting because in Spanish, there are at least two ways to say there, allí and allá. There's no set system these words can be used any way they're used, but in general, allí is the normal there, and allá is there like over there further away. So saying el mas allá is kind of like saying the one over there even further, or really the furthest away place or the most far place. I feel like el mas allá is short for el lugar mas allá, the most over there place, the furthest away place, which is an interesting way to say the afterlife. Spanish speakers, is there another way to say the afterlife? I don't recall allá being said much in Spain, so is it always el mas allá or do some people say el mas allí? Let me know in the comments or send me an email. Gracias. Even in more normal circumstances, el lugar is a really common way to say place, which you can see later in the Spanish translation three times. Un lugar bueno y un lugar malo, a good place and a bad place, and estás en el lugar bueno, you are in the good place. Another common way to say place is el sitio. El lugar and el sitio are often interchangeable, but not always. El sitio can be used for other things too. The next issue I want to discuss is the preterite versus the imperfect, the two past tenses in Spanish. When we're talking about what happened, we use the preterite tense, and when we're talking about how things were when something happened, when we're giving background information, we use the imperfect tense. In English, Michael said that you were raised on, but in Spanish, they translated that as que te enseñaron, which basically means that they taught you. Enseñaron is a preterite conjugation of enseñar. They went with the preterite tense here because that wording, that they taught you, has more of a what happened preterite vibe to it. They taught you. That's what happened. Make sense? If not, you need to watch the videos I made about the preterite versus the imperfect. Links to all of them are below this video or in the first comment. Next issue, ser versus a star times two. Michael said some form of to be twice, so the translators had to choose between ser and a star twice. For temporary state of being stuff, we use a star. For permanent essence stuff, we use ser. First, he said, it's not the heaven or hell idea. It's is short for it is, so that really means it is not the heaven or hell idea. Michael isn't talking about how the world is right now. He's not talking about a temporary state of the world. Michael is talking about the essence of the world, how it is permanently, how it works when we die. That's why they went with ser here. S is a present tense conjugation of ser. Then in the last little sentence here, Michael tells Eleanor, you're in the good place, which really means you are in the good place. Eleanor is currently located in the good place. She wasn't there before. Now she is. This is talking about Eleanor's temporary state of being, her location. That's why they used estar here. Estas is a present tense conjugation of estar. If you didn't totally get that, you need to check out the video I made about ser versus a star. The last issue I want to discuss is, why did they say no es la idea del cielo y el infierno que te enseñaron? Why did they say el before cielo and before infierno? We just say it's not the idea of heaven or hell that they taught you. We don't say the before heaven or before hell. This happens a lot. There are many situations in which they say el or la in Spanish when we don't say the in English. There are many different reasons this happens and there are some general patterns to look out for, but in this case it comes down to the specific words involved. When we say heaven and hell, they say cielo and infierno. But that doesn't mean cielo and infierno mean heaven and hell necessarily. Cielo is just cielo. Infierno is just infierno. And don't forget, cielo is also how they say sky. And that is what's going on. The word cielo can mean heaven, or it can mean sky, or it can mean heavens, or anything like that. And in the same context, with the same wording, with the word sky and heavens, we would use the word the. It's not the idea of the sky that they taught you, or it's not the idea of the heavens that they taught you. We only omit the when we say heaven. The same thing is going on with hell and infierno. When I looked up the history of the word infierno by typing etymology infierno Spanish into Google, I quickly saw that it comes from the Latin word infernus or inferna, which means the lower regions, basically. That's the original meaning of infierno, or the central core idea that it represents. So they would say, no es la idea del cielo y el infierno que te enseñaron, when we say it's not the idea of heaven and hell that they taught you. But when they say that, it's really
really like they're saying, it's not the idea of the sky and the lower regions that they taught you, or it's not the idea of the heavens and the lower regions that they taught you. Feel me? The words heaven and hell are these special words we have in English with which we don't normally use the word the. With most other nouns, though, in the same context, we do say the. And in Spanish, instead of having special words for heaven and hell like we do, they just use the same words they use for the sky and the lower regions, though I think infierno is mostly used for hell. Bottom line, when we look at the real meaning of the words, not just how we currently use them sometimes in English, everything matches up. We say the in English both times, they say el in Spanish both times. I call that the language of reality, which I talk about in my premium course, Logical Spanish. And don't forget, until none of us are stuck in our houses anymore, you can get Logical Spanish for whatever price you want with the Name Your Price special I'm currently running on the Lifetime membership, which includes Logical Spanish. Go to SpanishDude.com slash Lifetime for all the details. There's really no reason anymore for anybody to not be a Lifetime member. If you can't swing the $5 minimum, please email me. Okay, until next time, hasta luego.